chapter 5 in our normal passage that I've been preaching out of, uh, Fruit of the Spirit. Faith. I know this thing is not going to work the way I want it to, but that's okay. My wife, she's going to be taking uh, Joey to the doctor tomorrow. He's got, you might have noticed some of the red around his eyes, and uh, they tell us that it's allergies, and so we want to get that checked out tomorrow uh, and make sure it's all good. They, they've told us, we went to the doctor on, uh, what's today? Uh, went there uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, they told us it was just allergies. And uh, you know, so Sarah's convinced uh, that it's milk allergies. And I told her, I said, if that's what you're convinced of, I trust the motherly instincts more than I trust anybody else. And uh, so, if that's what you're convinced that it is, uh, then uh, that's what I believe that it is. You know, uh, God's giving you some intuition that He didn't give me. The fruit of the spirit. Faith, not face. And that's why. All right, you guys there in your passage of scripture, Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter five. We'll read verses sixteen uh, down through twenty-two. All right, I want to go ahead and read. This thing is not working right now. Uh, it says, uh, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are the contrary the one to the other. And uh, it goes on to say, These are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings of the such like of which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. And let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for uh, just being able to get into your word once again. And Lord, I pray you would just guide and direct the passage. Lord, uh, work within our hearts. Uh, some of these things are hard to, to, to understand, Lord, but we know that you have the Spirit of God uh, that opens up our, our minds, our wisdom, gives us understanding, enlightens us to the truth, comparing Scripture with Scripture. Lord, I pray you would just uh, be with us tonight and help us to uh, have these fruits of the Spirit. Again, we've been studying over them many times and uh, growing in, in our faith, hopefully, Lord, and uh, applying each and every one of these to our life. And we know that uh, it's not various different fruits. We know that it's one fruit, and each and every one of them have their place, uh, Lord, and to help us to aid us in our Christian walk. And we pray that we just use these things uh, for your glory. And, and Lord, help us as we try to walk in a way that's pleasing, that's a way that's uh, glorifying to you, Lord, that people may see our good works and glorify God the Father. I pray you watch over us tonight and uh, help us. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. In November 1975, there were 75 uh, inmates that came up, and they were came up with this great big scheme. They thought it was going to be a, a quick escape for them, and so they began to dig underneath the prison where they were, digging a secret tunnel and so forth. It was designed them to bring them outside of the walls. As you imagine, any inmate, that's what they're wanting, just to escape. They're not planning on going anywhere else other than someplace where they could find some concealment. And so with all the genius of their abilities, with all the best of their, their smarts, that they could try to figure out to navigate and, uh, of course, you know, distribute the dirt and get rid of it and so forth, cover up their tracks. Well, these guys, this is what they did. They started digging this secret tunnel underneath of their uh, prison walls uh, to get on the other side of the Satillo prison in northern Mexico. And so on April 15th, they finally, uh, April 18th, they finally got on the other side in eight, 1976. But you can't imagine where they showed up. Anybody got any guesses? Right there in the courthouse where they got convicted for the crimes in the first place. You know, there's no place where somebody wants to end up, but uh, the judges quickly captured them and uh, returned them to their, their home place. Of course, they found them different cells where they couldn't dig underneath the, the tunnels anymore, and uh, they all got returned to their jail. 
And you can imagine exerting all your efforts. Uh, this is not anything that you want to do. You're not trying to exert your efforts, your energy, your strength to just come up short and to uh, be led into some place that's leading you into bondage or into captivity or, or back into a place where you're not benefited in the least. And so, but this is what these inmates did, and I believe that's what the Galatians did. You know, they, they, they started out well, the Apostle Paul said. He said, you started out in the Spirit. You've, you've, you, you started out a good race. You started out a good Christian walk. And you were following in the faith. But he, again, he tells us in Galatians chapter 3, he says, Who hath bewitched you that you should uh, believe this, this, this lie, that you should be entangled again with this yoke of bondage? He said, the Spirit of Christ has set you free, but you found yourself and you're, you strive to, to try to fulfill the law and everything. You've brought yourself back back under this, this law. You've brought yourself back under this yoke of bondage. And here this is what the Apostle Paul is trying to get them to, to see, trying to impress upon their minds. they begun so well, but they were hindered. They were free, and then they began to get entangled again with the, uh, under the bondage of the law. The embers of their love had grown cold. The joy had turned to sorrow. I mean, their long-suffering, they began to have this long-suffering spirit. They began to be quick-tempered and easily offended. And, uh, of course, it influenced their faith. As you see, it's the next fruit of the Spirit that's in line. The fruit of the Spirit, which is faith. Uh, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And uh, we're coming to a close on all of these. Their walk with the Lord had begun to falter dramatically, as you can imagine. You know, if you lose your faith, if you, I mean, if you lose your love, you lose your peace, you lose your joy, you lose... I mean, it's all got to come to the point where your, your faith is going to... All the rest of it is going to undo as well. And so this is what they're, they're seeing. Their attention toward God and the things of God had begun to shift from being upward, walking in the Spirit. Their faith in God had begun to shift outwardly one toward another, trying to keep the law and uh, begin to hinder their unity as well. It's very possible that these things uh, to happen to ourselves if the Apostle Paul can confront the Galatian believers and say, you know, uh, you guys are lacking here in this fruit. You need the fruit of the Spirit, which is faith. Well, it's easy for us to lose us or, or not to be full of the Spirit and thereby not being full of the Spirit, uh, not having these fruits produced in our life. It's not that it's not there because if we had the fruit of the if we've been saved, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. It's natural for the, having the Holy Spirit to produce fruit. It's natural for it to be there. But that fruit is easily, as you know from the rose bushes out here, you know, you don't water it, you don't take care of it, what's going to happen? It's going to dry up and wither. And I believe this is what it's doing to their faith. Their spiritual walk has become darkened. And uh, we need to guard against it to watch our walk in the Lord. You asked me tonight, well, how do we know if we have this fruit of the Spirit, which is faith? And uh, to which I might reply to you, well, tell me about your walk in the Lord. How, how do you know that you have the fruit of the Spirit, which is faith, uh, I believe is closely related to our walk, closely related to our Scripture, uh, because you know, faith comes by what? Hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And so thereby, you know, if we're not hearing the law, if it's not influencing our walk, guess what we're not producing? Uh, faith in our spiritual walk with the Lord. And uh, so it's closely associated with our uh, the Scripture being inside of us, you know, that, that uh, engrafted seed uh, that's within us, that, that Word of God is meant to ha help us to grow, and of course, not only that, but our Christian walk. Uh, you can tell if somebody has love, if they have love for the brethren. You can tell if somebody has joy, whether or not they've been, you know, you guys know these guys, they uh, start out and maybe every single day they feel defeated, uh, in their Christian walk. You, you guys know people like that? They just wake up and they say, well, you know, I can't do it. I feel defeated. It's not working. And they lose their joy. That's part of the fruit that's been lost. Or it could be on the other side of it to where they feel empowered. And they say, yes, I can do it through Christ who enables me and strengthens me to have this sort of walk. Well, the same is true of faith. It's Faith is something by which we're grounded by, it's something we're guided by, and something that we grow by. And uh, as we get into the Word of God tonight, that's what I want you to see, that uh, faith, is a, faith is a spiritual work. 
you know, it's, it's of no, no other means. He says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. And, and of course, we know if we're led by the Spirit of God, that led there is in a passive voice. It's not something that we produce of our own self. It's something that's produced in us. And I'll clarify this as we go through. So I want you to pay close attention because sometimes, well, people get things all twisted out of joint. And I don't want you to do that. Generally, when you look at faith, what's the first thing that you think of? How does faith apply? Yeah, most of the time it's salvation. You know, if I ask any of you, that would be the first thing you, you, you think of. I need faith in order to be saved, for by grace are you saved through faith. And, and that's automatically the first thing to our minds, but that's not the only sort of faith that we find in Scripture. And uh, I want to just unravel this for you. You're saved by grace through faith, yeah, that's salvation. But when we explore this topic or subject of faith, there's two things that I want you to see. I want you to consider what faith is and then what it's not what faith is and what it's not. Um, from the New Testament alone, and uh, you know, I don't know what anybody else thinks. This is just what the Spirit of God's revealed to me, and this is what I'm sharing with you tonight. But uh, faith comes in a variety pack. And my wife sends me to the store sometimes to get some applesauce for Elijah, for Joey, you know, since he can now start eating more solid foods, uh, and eventually it'll grow into... Uh, other things like raviolis and such, but she'll send me to the store to get uh, applesauce. And I'll go in there and I'll look at the applesauce selection. Well, guess what? There's only, uh, th there's several different sorts of applesauce. It's not just one kind. You know, I, I wish when I go down the cereal aisle, there's one kind of cereal because it's easy for me to make a decision. But when I go down the, the applesauce aisle, you know, for the kids, it comes in a variety pack. It comes from regular applesauce. Apple, apple. This is the thing that they come up with kids. I don't understand it. Why don't they just call it original? But apple, apple is the, the original applesauce. They have apple cinnamon. They probably have apple brown sugar. I'm not sure. And uh, I know that they have unsweetened applesauce. And, and, and I don't know why they would do that. Everything tastes better sweet, right? But there's a variety. But when you get down to it, all together it's, it's applesauce, right? It's all applesauce. All of this is faith. All of it uh, is essentially all the same. You can trace it down and, and all of it, you'll find where all of it applies to each other. Whether we talked about faith and salvation, faith that is the faith, where we're to contend for the faith, which is what? The Word of God. Whether we're talking about faith that is a, a gift of the Spirit, where we go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and we'll get over there, where it's talking about the one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is faith. And then you move on down to where we get here. When we get into our study here in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is faith. And, and it's very important for us to understand this as we come down through. So faith that results in the salvation. Uh, you know, we can get in here and look in Romans where it says that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for what? For righteousness. He believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. It's not anything that Abraham had to work up. It's not anything that he earned. It was freely given, freely received. He received it by faith. And now we go over to Romans chapter 5. The Bible says, Romans 5.1, it says, Therefore being justified by faith. And that's talking about our salvation. We're justified by faith. 1 Corinthians, we can go to chapter 15. What's that talking about? The death, the burial, and resurrection. And he says, I've preached to you all these things as it relates to your salvation, how there's no other way to be saved. This is it. This, this is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ. There's no other way to be saved. And because of the death, burial, and resurrection, this is what you're saved by, unless you've believed in vain. I'll go from that, 1 Corinthians 15, Ephesians where it talks about our walk and our basis of our faith is on the merit of God's grace and redeeming us unto Himself. Ephesians 1.13, he says, "...in whom also ye trusted," talking about Jesus Christ, "...in whom also ye trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, and it was but a moment when you were..." Uh, you know, oh, that's... This is my... My commentary, okay? 
It says, In whom also you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also uh, after you believed you were sealed by, by that Holy Spirit of promise. But it was a moment, and the point of all this here is the where it all happens all at once. You know, when we come to salvation, it's not a process. Well, I got to have faith, and then I got to confess, and I got to do this and this, and, and, and salvation happens over a process. Everything happens at once. At the same time, I cry out to God to save me from my sins. He's forgiven me. He's adopted me into the family. He's justified me. He's done everything all at one time. It's unbelievable, but uh, the moment we were saved, and when we came convicted by the truth of the gospel and by the Holy Spirit, and this is what I believe that he's pointing out here, he says, after you heard the word of truth, the word of truth is essential to our faith because it's the Scripture. And he says, after you, you believed, you were... And so anyway, they were convicted by the Scripture, they were convicted by the Holy Spirit, and convict, uh, their conscience. They were convinced that there was no other way to be saved. They confessed Jesus Christ as their Savior. They were converted, uh, changed, being made new creatures in Christ. And then they were consecrated or made children of God. And so all these happened at one time in God's free gift. And so there's one kind of faith, that's salvation, what I just pointed out. And then there's another kind of faith, which is the faith we just mentioned, which is the Scripture. We earnestly contend for the faith. Where faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, all this is wrapped up in the faith. And you know, uh, as well as I do, that faith was essential in our salvation. When somebody took that Word of God and took it to us, showed us plainly from the Scripture, like Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, opened it up and revealed to us, hey, I am a sinner. Hey, I do need to be saved. Hey, this is the Savior. It was a Scripture that led me to the point of salvation. We get into the faith as a resource of the Spirit. Uh, Romans 12, it's reference as a measure of faith. It says God's given to every one of us a measure of faith, right? And it begins to list down through all those the uh, different, I think it's the evangelist, pastor, teacher, and so forth in Romans 12. It's either there or in Ephesians uh, 4. Sometimes I get those mixed up. But, uh, but it gives every one of us a measure of faith. And then 1 Corinthians 12, he says that this is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Go over to 1 Corinthians 12 real quick. Verse, uh, we'll start verse 8. Um, there's diversities of gift, verse 6. There's a manifestation of the Spirit, verse 7. To profit every man with all. Verse 8, for the one is given by the Spirit of the word of wisdom, another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and then gifts of healing, uh, working in miracles, prophecy, uh, discerning of spirits, uh, tongues or languages, and then the interpretation of the, the tongues or the languages that's given there. And so faith is listed amongst one of these gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'm not going to go into, that's not the subject matter for tonight. Uh, some people might wonder, well, what's the gift of faith? The best I can tell you, if you go over to 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 2, uh, I think it is, verse 2. It says, For though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing, I believe that has something to do with that gift somewhere along the line. But anyway, it's a, that's not the subject matter for tonight, so I'm not going to go into that. Uh, but you could say it's navigating and negotiating through problems as a counselor uh, or something of the sort. There's faith uh, as a result of the Spirit. And this is where we come in for tonight. This joins the idea of, um, you know, the, the Scripture tells us in Romans, and Habakkuk, I believe it is, it says the just should live by what? The just should live by faith. So there's a certain walk that we ought to have. Uh, a walk that I believe that's in, in just a part of this fruit of the Spirit. Now it starts out with a, a fruit. It starts out with that, that, that initial being saved and that you know, you're brought into the family of Christ, that sanctification. And then that work of the fruit of the Spirit, it all of a sudden begins and it results into a, a walk that we have. 
And you know, day after day as you start getting into the Scriptures, start learning, start growing, all this results into a, a walk. And I believe both of these are enlisted together as, as that one uh, idea here, our faith is a result of the Holy, uh, of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you exactly, because I want to get down through here uh, in the second point, but um, this is what I want you to beware of. There's, there, there's a fruit of the Spirit, there's a walk of the Spirit, all that's entitled in that, that fourth uh, point of faith, but, um, and again, each of these are interconnected. But uh, you know, when you boil them down, there's really only three kinds of spirit. There's a saving faith, three kinds of faith. There's a saving faith, there's a working faith, as it says in the book of James. You know, you talk about all the faith that you have, and yet you're not helping out your brothers and sisters in Christ. I'll show you my faith by my works. Uh, he points that out. There's a saving faith, there's a working faith, and then there's a living faith. That's really what I'm coming down to that last point. But here's, here's some things that it's not. This is not what it's not saying. Because some people can get it confused. You get the Calvinistic idea and they say, well, you know, the reason why I can't believe is because God's not giving me the spirit of faith and so thereby it's God's fault that I'm not saved. Therefore, it's God's fault that I'm not walking in the spirit and, and, and something of that nature. Because I've not been given this fruit. That's not what this is talking about. That's not what this is saying. But they'll use this and they'll twist it to that understanding. But who are these people that the Apostle Paul is addressing? They're already believers. It's not that they're not believing. It's not that they're... Uh, it's just that they're not growing in their faith. They, they started growing and then they went backwards. They started downward spiraling as we... It's not. It's kind of different than what we get in Hebrews because they're willingly, because of the persecution, trying to go back into. Uh, they're going backwards in their faith, but these guys are just getting mixed up and jumbled with error, jumbled with their theology. It's not right, and they've been led astray back under the law because of again of what they see uh, Peter doing and Barnabas doing, how they've been acting one way with the Jews and one way with the Gentile believers, and so that's bring them up this, this error. And so the Apostle Paul is addressing this. And this is why he says the fruit of the Spirit is faith. And sometimes you have more of it, sometimes you have less of it. But here, this, it's not saying that, you know, I need this in order to get saved. They're already saved. Does that make sense? It's not, it's the same idea as uh, those who will come up and say, well, Pastor, you know, it's not my fault that I'm not growing in my Christian walk. Because God has not given me the spirit of faith in order for me to overcome my carnal attitude. God has not given me the spirit of faith or this fruit of the spirit which is faith to overcome my addictions. God has not given me the spirit of faith to overcome A, B, C, D, whatever the case may be. And so they, they again, they turn it over to God and they say, well, it's God's fault that I'm this way. That I'm walking contrary. And some people would do that. That's because they've misunderstood the Scriptures. They're twisting it. You know, there's another Scripture in Ephesians where it says, it's, uh, in Philippians, where it says it's uh, to will and to do of God's good pleasure. And the Holy Spirit, God will help us to do that. Christ will help us to will and to do of His good pleasure. This is the point of the Apostle Paul. That he will help us to do it. But the verse that comes before this in Philippians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, before that in verse 12, what does it say? He says, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. And so there's a responsibility for something for us to do. We can't say, well, uh, you know, it's God's fault. No, God will point it back to us and He say, well, you were unwilling. You're not willing to grow in your walk. You're not willing to get into the Word of God. It's not God's fault. It's your fault if you're not growing in grace. It's God's fault if you're not... Uh, growing in your faith. And so I'm, I'm bringing this all back down because of their unwillingness. And then there's the other error. I, I've, I've said, seen several different places where uh, you'll see it in many different versions of the Bible. Maybe the NIV, ESV, or one of these other Vs, or whatever the case may be. But it kind of bothers me a little bit because some people will put in there instead of faith, they'll try to turn it into faithfulness. Is faith and faithfulness the same thing? It's not. 
is, is entirely two different things. You know, as a husband, I can be faithful to my wife, and yet I can act in a way where I don't have faith. I can have a ministry and act faithful to my ministry and, and be there and yet not exercise faith. Faithfulness is something that you do, and that's not faith. Faith is not something that you do, it's something that you believe. And so we got to be aware of that. So it is exactly as what the, the translators put it here, it is faith. It's not faithfulness, it's faith. Now I'm going to dig in here in just a minute. The Galatian believers were lacking faith. They were trying to please God by their works, but the Apostle Paul was trying to get them to understand, hey, you can't please God by your works. If you want to please God without faith, it's impossible to please God. This is the only way to, to, to please the Lord with your walk. It's the only way you'll succeed and not get aggravated. It's the only way that you'll succeed and not wear out if you walk in faith, as, as the Bible tells us here. And these were believers. Again, they were saved. And, and Galatians 3, 3, turn over there just a minute. Galatians 3, 3, what does it say? He says... Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? And what, so what are they doing? They're trying to be made perfect by the flesh, by the works that they're doing. He said, you've begun in the Spirit. You've begun well. Now you're trying to be made perfect by the... This is not uh, what, what they're getting into. It wasn't saving faith, was it? They're already saved. It wasn't a working faith. It was a living faith that I believe that we're, we're getting to. Um, again, the just should live by faith. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians 4. And the Apostle Paul, he says here, he says, but we have this treasure, verse 7, Four, chapter 4, verse 7, it says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the Spirit may be of God and not of us. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh." So then death worketh in us, but life in you, having the same spirit of faith, there's our word, according as it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. Now this is a quote from Psalm 116. It says, I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. While we look not on the things which are seen, but on the things which are not seen. For the things which are not seen are temporal, but the things which are, are the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And the Apostle Paul, he's talking about something that's internal here, that quality of the heart and mind, this, the outward man, again, he's saying, is pierced day by day. The mind is being renewed, the heart is uh, being convinced by the Holy Spirit, and, and, and they're drawing, uh, they're, they're being settled in their faith. They're being settled in their faith. You know, these guys were being settled in their conviction their confidence, and their consistency. And you guys are probably not weight lifters. I tried lifting weights for a little bit of time, but it didn't work out so well for me. And I'm not going back to lifting weights, so you can forget about it. Um, you know, we was in the Army for some times. We did push-ups, and, uh, you know, I wish I could do as many push-ups as what I did back then. But we may not talk about bodily exercise, but there are some things that we worked hard at, right? Mastering a skill for a job, trying to grow, trying to learn in a trade. You know, you've been in the, um, the pipe fitting business for how long? 43 years. 43 years. And you learned a lot over that time. Uh, yeah, amen. 
And uh, Brother Adams back there, he would tell me about his days in the produce, working the, the, the produce uh, stands there for the PX. Or I think that's what it was, right? Commissary. Commissary? Not the PX. Not the PX. Okay, I get that, get that straight. <laughs> Uh, you know, Brother Ken working with generators, uh, you know, Miss Bonnie working with copiers and all that kind of secretaries. And uh, I mean, she's uh, just like what I would describe as a jack of all trades, master of none. Would that accurately fit it? Yeah. But we're all learning. I mean, we're, we're striving, we're trying to build, and it didn't start out right that first day. And you just continue one day right after another, right after another. You keep at it. You keep learning. You keep growing. You keep going at it. And as a pastor, that's really what I strive to do because this is my trade. This is my craft. This is the Bible, the Word of God. You know, even if God didn't call me to be a pastor, it's still my craft. It's still what I'm called to do as a, just as a Christian, much less as a pastor. And this book is a... It's a wonderful book, a living book, as you all know. And there's constantly things to learn and constantly things to grow in. And, you know, have I been taught by, by teachers? Yes. Do I have books in my library? Yes. But you want to know something? I don't, I don't have the faith in my professors. That's their faith. I don't have the faith of the people who have written these books. That's their faith. And I have to come to my own subtle conclusion of what this Bible says. And, and I tell you what, I've picked some very hard passages to, to preach through at times. You know, try preaching through Job or Ecclesiastes or Hebrews and, 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 and some of these books. And, and I'm getting ready to come up to a passage of Scripture, Hebrews chapter 6. And you don't want to know how many people just go ahead and skip right over it because it's difficult. But I, I'm convinced that being here within this Word and studying and going at it and say, God, I'm not going to give up. I want to, I want to wrestle with You. I want to struggle with it. I want to put my all energy into it because this is my faith. The faith is not, you know, when we talk about the faith, a lot of people think it's just a doctrine of, well, the, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit or the doctrine of Christ or the doctrine of the Trinity and, and, and that's the faith. Or maybe the virgin birth. You want to know what my faith is? <laughs> the whole Bible. And so it's, it's, it takes my every bit of energy to get inside, to, to study it, just to wrestle with it and say, God, help me to, not only just to get in it because the Pharisees, you want to know, they knew the Word of God. They knew it so well that they were able to tell men, hey, you need to do this, and Ken, you need to do that, and, and, and Brother Don, you need to do this, and this, and this, and this, but they weren't doing it, were they? They would heap burdens upon men's shoulders and telling them what to do in order to be a good Pharisee. They weren't doing it themselves. They were uplifting the men's traditions, but they weren't uplifting the Word of God. They were being uh, hearers of the Word, but they weren't being doers of the Word. You want to know why? Because it's hard. And, and in order for me to, to have this fruit of the Spirit, this is what I'm telling you, it's, it's a day by day and exercising and saying, God, this is what you say within your word. This is how you want me to walk. And, and by your grace, this is, I want to appropriate it in myself. I can't do it. But I want, to, I want to take this word, whether it's talking about tithing, whether it's talking about um, raising children, whether it's talking about being a good husband or a good pastor, I want to take this word and I want to begin to apply it. And I want to study what it says about, and you want to know what happens after a while. You begin to start being convinced, hey, there's something to this. You want to know what happens after a while. You begin to get concreted into your faith. And, and when somebody says, well, you know, it doesn't, you know, God's not so serious about that. You know, about that drinking and about that carrying on, about taking part in riots and tattoos and all this other kind of stuff. God's not so serious about that. And you get in this Word of God, you'll be more convinced, you'll be concrete, and you'll say, hey, you show me that in the Bible. And so what I'm saying is, you spend enough time within this Word of God, it begins to, you, be, you begin to be convicted of it. 
this is my conviction. I'm not going to turn. I'm not going to twist. This is going to be something that I'm going to hold true to until the day that I die. Why? Because it's been my life experience of living for God. And I know that this is the way that He's taught me. I know that this is the right path as David, I mean, time and time again in the Psalms. When he wouldn't lift up his hand against God's anointed and, and, and against everybody's whole imagination. What? This is your time, David, to avenge yourself on Saul. Some people might have looked at David and said, you know, it's okay, David, for you to sit back and take it easy. You're the king. It's okay, David. You can have whatever woman you want to. You're the king. But that wasn't pleasing to God. But see, we need to get within the Word of God. This is what's going to instill the faith. By you believing the Word of God. By you taking it in and saying, this is what I want to walk by. And yes, I'll fail, but it just made me fall seven times, but it'll rise back up again. But day after day, I want you to get more settled in your faith. I don't want, it to be, I don't want my faith to be somebody else's faith. I want it to be my faith. Because this is what I'm going to stand by. It says, uh, what is it, Romans, I believe that it is. It says, don't judge another man by what he eats, what day he observes. You know, he has a master. He's going to stand or fall to his own master. He's going to answer to God for what he does. You just keep your eyes on you. You answer to God for what you're going to do. And my question for tonight is, are you ready to answer for what you believe? <laughs> Uh, I am settled in my faith. But I tell you what, i got a lot more to grow. But I believe there are some people that's not settled like the Galatian believers. And I said, well, there's got to be something else. You know, I know I'm saved, i got Christ. This teacher's teaching this, and that teacher's teaching that. You know, we're not sure what's right anymore. Well, what happened? You were saved. You were settled in the faith. What happened? Who hath bewitched you? If any man preach any other gospel, what does the Apostle Paul says? Let him be a curse. Don't have anything to do with Mark that man that don't have anything to do with him. It's a hard thing to do sometimes. But I'm saying you need your own faith. I got children to raise and I plan on teaching them the way they ought to go, but you want to know something, they got their own faith. Anyway, I hope that this is a blessing. You need the Scripture in order to have this fruit of the Spirit. That's the only way you want to have faith. You need to be in the Spirit. You need to be yielded to God and say, yeah, you know, Lord, Your will be done. I'll follow it the best way I know how. And then obedience, because faith and obedience always go together. It's not just being a hearer but a doer. So let's pray for tonight. Uh, and we'll pray for our missionaries and uh, so forth. I'll, I want to pray and then we'll uh, pray together as a church body. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank You so much for loving us and taking care of us and meeting our needs. And Lord, Your Word is a wonderful book. Uh, when I get down into it and I begin to study about the fruit of the Spirit and how it's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness, faith, temperance, Lord, there's a lot of things we have a lot to work on. And, uh, Lord, we just got to stay at it. Lord, we can't take our eyes off of You. We got to follow. We're convinced, as Peter said, that You have the words of truth. There's no other way. And I pray You help us to be settled in our faith. I pray You help us to be strengthened in the Holy Spirit. You help us in our walk. Lord, I know that there's many errors out there. But I'm glad that You've given us the truth. And just help us to walk close to You. I pray for our missionaries. I received a letter today by um, Mr. Hurst, Lord, a great brother in Christ, and I'm praying for him. And so glad that he desires to stay faithful. And But I do pray for him and for his wife, Miss Doris, who seems to be declining from everything that I can tell from, from what he's written to us. And Lord, I pray for grace for, for him. And I'm glad that the, the children have stepped in to help him. And Lord, you know all about his issues. You know all about his problems. But he's a sweet man of God. And I desire to be like him. 
Lord, uh, I'm so thankful for the others. I think of Richard Murphy and his wife and the struggles that he's going through and always so upbeat and so jovial and happy in the Lord. And I know that this is only something that you can do. Lord, and I'm so grateful for our missionaries to be able to, to pray for them, to be able to partner with them, whether it's through giving or through prayer or whatever the means may be. And Lord, I pray you just protect them and their ministries. Lord, be with us here. Be with uh, uh, Ruth, Lord. I pray for her tonight. Uh, she's in the hospital. I pray you just watch over our families. Lord, uh, I think of the Burleys. Uh, they've been on my mind a whole lot here lately. And uh, Lord, I just pray for them. Whatever they may be going through, I just pray that you would just strengthen them and help them and encourage them. And I just pray that we'll see him again soon. And Lord, I do pray for Brother Ken and pray for him and his wife and for Aiden, for Riley, Lord. I pray for them. Pray for Aiden's salvation. Lord, I pray for her to be saved and uh, for Riley. And Lord, I pray that she grows up knowing you. And Lord, there's too much going on not to know you as Savior. Uh, the day is growing too close not to know you as Savior. Uh, Beat all that, Lord, our lives are too short. And Lord, I pray you help us to be salt and light in this earth for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Sheely, I know I don't have out prayer, prayer sheets. I'm going to have just you pray, and I'm going to have Brother Adams pray. And uh, Brother Adams, would you close us out? Uh, Brother Sheely.